Philadelphia native DeAndre Swift had quite the homecoming, pillaging the Vikings' defense to the tune of 175 rushing yards. Swift's traits that made him an early second-round selection were on display, and when you combine his talent, the Eagles' offensive line, and their game planning, the NFL is going to have a problem slowing down this rushing attack. Offensive line and run game coordinator Jeff Stoutland has been on the record that each week the Eagles will identify a few particular run concepts that they believe will be effective, and they'll build their rushing attack around that. The Eagles are known for running the same concept 10 to 15 times a game. There were instances last year when they would run the same play three to four times in a row. Well, the Eagles took that to the max on Thursday night. Of DeAndre Swift's 28 carries, 27 of them were some type of inside zone variation. Of those 27 inside zone runs, 21 of them were zone weak concepts, meaning the run was designed to go away from the tight end side of the field. But the Eagles aren't running a standard inside zone, where the aiming point is a B gap. They're running a tight zone variation, where the aiming point for the running back is more downhill. Every team has different aiming points, but in general, it's anywhere from the front side A gap to the back side A gap. What this does is put the running back on a more downhill trajectory and gives him easier access to cut the run back. This pairs well with designing the zone to the weak side because zone weak plays more often than not end up cutting back to the strong side. When you look at the Vikings personnel usage in week one, they would often have their 265 pound outside linebacker lined up outside shade of the guard or inside shade of the tackle. That might work against some teams, but that's not going to fly against a combination of Jordan Mailata and Landon Dickerson. In addition to that, two of the three defense attacks tackles they would also use regularly were sub 300 pounds. Brian Flores will also get pretty goofy with his pressure packages and disguises, and while that's all fun and games, sometimes it ends up with the 255 pound Daniil Hunter lined up inside as well. You need much more mass inside if you're going to slow down the Eagles rushing attack. So Stoutland went with a handful of plays that would get Mylotta and Dickerson, along with the help of the tight ends, to essentially cave in these smaller defenders. It resulted in some massive lanes to run through. These plays were also great against Flores' double mug looks. Those plays are intended to create confusion in the passing game, but it also puts two to three linebackers on the line of scrimmage. If you put linebackers walked up on Mylotta, Dickerson, and Kelsey, you should expect them to get walked 10 yards off the line of scrimmage. The Vikings were never seriously committed to stopping the run. If this is the best personnel they can put out there when a team is running it down their throats over and over and over again, it's going to be a long season for Minnesota. If the Eagles weren't running tight zone weak, then they were running split zone, which pretty much functioned in the same way as tight zone weak. They were able to get double teams on the Vikings' smaller defensive ends and tackles. The game plan was simple, yet effective. When you pair it with an electric back like DeAndre Swift, it's lights out for the defense. Those wide open holes are great, but not every play works out as designed. On this play, there's an unblocked linebacker in the hole, but Swift shows off his quick feet, strong jump cuts, and incredible burst. Swift has great mobility in his ankles, knees, and hips, allowing him to sink and lower his center of gravity. Not every back can get into positions like this, and it allows DeAndre to explode out of his jump cuts. As soon as he lands, gets up to speed instantly, leaving the unblocked linebacker in his dust. The outside linebacker has good leverage on Swift, but his acceleration allows him to win the edge. Ultimately, this run came back due to a holding penalty, but this play pretty well defines the strengths of Swift's game. Having a player like Swift helps further unlock the Eagles' rushing attack because of his creativity and ability to make things happen when the play breaks down. Here, Swift does an awesome job making the quick decision to cut back as he sees color flash across his face. It appears that he has an open hole for a second, but the linebacker and safety are closing quickly, so in an instant, he cuts it back one more more time. He comes up just inches away from the touchdown. In this position, most running backs would lower their shoulder and try to pick up as many yards as possible. While I'm not saying that's a bad move, Swift's vision, footwork, and burst allows him to turn tough yards into big plays. For most of the night, Swift was patient when approaching the line of scrimmage, letting his blocks develop. On this play, DeAndre does a great job pressing the hole. This lets Kelsey help Dickerson secure his block, while also giving Kelsey time to get up to the linebacker. Swift gives one last head and shoulder fake to influence a linebacker into Kelsey before cutting back. In the NFL, running lanes are often small and close quickly. The offensive line and running back have to work as a unit to help each other open up bigger holes. Swift, Dickerson, and Kelsey did a good job of that here. Again, we see Swift being patient approaching the line. This draws the linebackers forward into his blockers, allowing him the time and angles to flip his hips and accelerate outside for a big game. Swift had a monster game, finishing with 175 yards, but I think he could have had even more. Here the Eagles are running outside zone, the only non-inside zone run play Swift ran all day. The line does a good job creating a crease, and Swift does a good job finding it, but he ends up cutting this one too far back. I think this has the potential of a touchdown if he took what is known as an S path. At this point when he cuts it back, Swift has to understand that defenders are pursuing from the backside. So when he cuts upfield, he needs to then look to hug his path behind his blockers. You might hear this referred to as riding the wave. When you draw the ideal path, it looks like an S. While Swift did display good patience on many runs, I think he could have been more consistent in that area. Sometimes he is quick to cut the run back, which 
made life more difficult for himself and his blockers. On this play, he would have had a much better chance at a big gain if he pressed the hold just a little bit more so that Lane and Goddard had time to combo up to the linebacker. A premature cutback allows the linebacker time and space to react. When looking at the wide view, Swift had several yards of space to continue pressing the line before making a move. If he had pressed the line a little more, this dead leg he puts on Byron Murphy would have been all over the highlights. There were a few more plays similar to this, but nobody is going to be perfect. Sometimes holes and opportunities to create bigger plays are missed. But the vast majority of Swift's night was an overwhelming success, and it's going to give defensive coordinators yet another thing to be worried about with this Eagles offense. Swift ended the night with 31 touches. While that's fun from a fantasy perspective, he's going to get worn down come playoff time if he gets that many touches a game. What was surprising last night was how little Rashad Penny was used. He doesn't have the ability to turn nothing into something like Swift does, but he led the league in yards after contact the last two years, and running behind the Eagles' offensive line will give him more open holes than virtually any other team. This team's rushing attack has always been better when they've had a downhill element to it. In Sirianni's first year, Jordan Howard was a great downhill runner to pair with Miles. The Eagles averaged more yards per carry that year than last year. Jordan Howard averaged 4.7 yards a carry that year, and Miles had his highest yards per carry of his career at 5.5. Miles would take the beginning of drives, and then by the fifth or sixth play, when defenses are rotating their backup defensive line in, and the linebackers and safeties start to get a little winded, they would then have to contend with the hard running of Howard. So many smash and dash duos like that have been forces in the NFL. I really envisioned that would happen with Swift and Penny. For as dynamic as Swift is, he's not a pile pusher. He'll get guys off balance and run through contact, but he's not the top back you think of when it comes to short yardage situations. Penny would help in short yardage and also help in end of game situations, when defenses are gearing up to stop the run and there's less space to operate. Who knows though, maybe all those injuries and age have started catching up with Penny and he's lost his step. Maybe they want to keep his workload down until later in the season. But on a night where there was no gain well, Boston Scott left the game early and the Eagles were content running almost every play, it's not a good sign that Penny only got three carries. Either way, the Eagles have shown the other 31 teams yet another reason to worry about them. And that's without really having seen Swift featured in the passing game yet either. So good luck to NFL defenses out there as the Eagles continue to stockpile their offensive arsenal. Until next time, go Birds!